I have shamefully never played the first Red Dead Redemption. I have played Red Dead Redemption 2 because that's a PC game and I mostly play PC. Uh, so the fact that Red Dead Redemption 1 is finally coming to PC is very exciting to me. I am the target audience for this and it's also why I'm gonna maybe spend the $50 on this. But again, heads up, $50 for a game this old for most people, especially if you've already played it, I get that that's a bit of a sticking point. However, this video isn't so much about is the uh, what, what is the price and is the game good. This is about how does it run on PC, and uh, you know maybe how does that compare to system requirements and things like that. But what you see running right behind me right now is a GTX 1060 at ultra settings at 1080p, and you can see that the frame rates uh, are fairly high. At least in this intro cutscene, we will definitely get into some actual gameplay. Uh, also, we should talk about the system requirements um, because there's a couple of things to note here. Uh, one is that the minimum requirement is a GTX 960, but the recommended requirements go all the way up to a RTX 2070. This says RTX 270, but like there is no RTX 270. And I don't think they mean GTX 270 because it's paired up with an RX 5700 XT, which would be more in line with an RTX 2070. So this feels like a typo, but also that feels like a big ask for the recommended specs for a game this old, which is what I mentioned when I did my um, uh, system requirements video. But now that we have the actual game available, we can benchmark it. Uh, so anyway, again, I'm on a GTX 1060 here. The system requirements have a 960 as the minimum. What's up with that? I don't have a 960. The GTX 1060 is the oldest and weakest graphics card that I currently own. And then we can test higher end stuff if it becomes uh, necessary to do so. Um, also, I'm pretty excited to play this on my Steam Deck personally, because that's probably where, where I will end up playing it. This seems like a good fit as long as it runs well. Maybe we'll have time to test that out in the video as well. Let's go ahead and get out of this cutscene so we can test some actual gameplay and see if the performance numbers hold up. Okay, so where are we at here in actual gameplay? Looks like we're hanging out in the 80-something FPS range. Uh, it does dip into the 70s. Frame time graph is looking fairly smooth. There was a shader pre-compilation step. It was very quick, but it was present, uh, which does mean that we will hopefully not be getting a lot of stuttering. So I'm gonna run around the town here a bit. And yeah, frame time graph is looking pretty smooth. All right, frame rates are in the 70s, and I can imagine already the comment section exploding about a GTX 1060 running like an X, what is this, Xbox 360 game, should be running it at 5,000 frames per second. And I get that. Uh, but again, the graphic settings in this game uh, are pushed well beyond what the console was originally able to do. Also, my initial thought is that, well, yes, the character models are obviously very old, like this looks attractive enough that I don't think I'm gonna have like one of those moments. Sometimes I go to play old games and I'm just like, oh, maybe I could have played this when it came out, but it's just hideous now. I'm not getting that impression here. The art style goes a long way and the quality of the art here is quite good. Um, so, so along with the additional, like I think we're getting a lot better draw distances here and things like that, and also better anti-aliasing and higher resolution uh, than what the original console could do. Um, that helps out quite a bit. So let's go ahead and talk about those graphics options, by the way. So in the graphics options here, again, I'm running at 1080p. I'm gonna make myself ah, tiny and out of the way here. And the game does have a frame rate cap. You can push it up to 144. I'm sticking to 120 because that's where my capture card kind of uh, uh, caps out. I'm capturing externally on a second PC through a capture card. Um, for the sake of not putting any uh, recording rendering, uh, you know, burden on the the uh, the gaming PC, so the performance stats are what you would get uh, if you weren't also trying to record. Anyway, um, if we go to the graphics quality, there are settings like low, medium, high, ultra on a variety of options, including you know shadow quality, shadow softness, shadow blend, anisotropic level, all of that. Um, but also notice this: so the anti-aliasing defaults to AMD FSR 3 if you're on a, in an, uh, a GTX 1060. This game does support DLSS, but a 10 series card like I'm currently testing doesn't support DLSS, so that's why that's uh, not what I'm using here. But we can use it at, at FSR to deliver native anti-aliasing. 
Meaning, this is not FSR frame generation. Notice that there's, there's no frame gen turned on here. This is just using the FSR 3 upscaling, uh, but it's not even upscaling, it's using it as an anti-aliasing pass. The original game uh, would probably have used a, a, some kind of FXAA post-processing type anti-aliasing, and if we go ahead and kick that on, uh, I believe what we'll see is a bit of a frame rate improvement. See, we're up to around 90 FPS, but there's more jaggies, especially in motion. If you look at like the, the railing here and the grass and things like that, uh, don't know how much this will come through if, in, unless you're on, you know, uh, uh, maybe if you're on a tiny phone or something like that. But anyway, uh, so the, the addition of FSR3 as an anti-aliasing technique here is basically using it as like a high quality TAA solution. And uh, that should look a lot better than the FXAA the game originally had. But if you're one of those people who just hates any sort of TAA at all, uh, there, there is that FXAA option. But again, I think in motion, this keeps the jaggies down quite a bit better than FXAA did. Uh, or you could just you know turn off anti-aliasing entirely. But again, looking at here with the FSR3 anti-aliasing, 71 FPS when I'm staring at this. And that FXAA option, I think, again, will boost frame rates considerably. And so one of the reasons why this is running um, maybe slower than you might initially expect, again, turning off, going to FXAA instead, uh, boost frame rates up to 84 here. So that's where some of the performance cost is, is using uh, the higher quality anti-aliasing technique uh, with the uh, FSR3. So if you are on significantly lower end hardware, you might consider um, uh, dropping down to FXAA instead of using the uh, native anti-aliasing uh, techniques that are a bit more advanced here. Anyway, another way we could boost performance is turning down graphics quality. So if I went down to, uh, for example, medium settings instead of the ultra settings, so it turns down some of the shadows and whatnot, uh, now you can see my performance is closer to that maxed out uh, you know, 120 F uh, FPS line um, that I might be trying to achieve here. So if we go down to medium settings again, you can get um, considerably higher performance. So those ultra settings are absolutely costing you something, uh, but they're available since PC hardware has pushed pretty far. So anyway, that's what performance is like on the 1060 at, uh, at 1080p resolution. So now the question might be, okay, so if you have, uh, if you wanted to plug your PC into like a 4K display or something like that, uh, how would that go? So how about we go ahead and go back up to the ultra settings, at least at first, and then again, look at pushing the resolution. So what if uh, you had a 4K TV and you were wondering about playing on that? So 4K TV, uh, looks like that's gonna cap me out at 60 hertz, maybe because of my capture cards limits, but I don't think we'll be hitting 60 at native 4K anyway at ultra settings but let's go ahead and find out. Um, so GTX 1060 at native 4K ultra settings. What's our performance looking like? Uh, looking like we're hovering around the 30 FPS line. So maxing this thing out on a GTX 1060 at 4K resolution is around a 30 FPS experience. But again, the console version of the game I believe would have originally been around a 30 FPS experience. So hey, there is that. I would probably try to push things a bit higher though uh, by adjusting some stuff. Now, one option here again is we, we do get access to FSR upscaling. Uh, so that's certainly something that we could play around with. And there is even dynamic resolution scaling. Um, so if I set the se uh, super resolution to dynamic, uh, we could then try to do a dynamic resolution scale to 60 FPS, and I'm just honestly curious how that's gonna go ahead and play out. So, um, oh, but then we have to set a minimum render scale. So let's go back into those settings for a second. So the minimum render scale is, is how low are we going to allow this to go, right? So I'm gonna allow this thing to go as low as it wants. Does it not actually give us a percentage number? That seems a bit odd. It seems like it should be getting a, giving me a percentage number there. Let's try set, setting it to the minimum and go ahead and just see what happens. So are we, uh, is, it, is it working? Is it doing anything? 
Maybe I used the dynamic resolution slider in the wrong way. It seems to me like pulling it down would have been allowing it to go as low as possible. Let's go ahead and check if I try going the other way. Uh, slide this all the way over here. Does that actually allow it to dynamic resolution scale? I'm not seeing any frame rate differences than the native AA. So as far as I can tell here, it doesn't seem like the dynamic resolution scaling is working properly, at least with FSR. Um, so that seems unfortunate as far as I can tell. I'm using these settings uh, as intended here, but it doesn't seem to be kicking in. So what if we manually apply FSR, frame, uh, FSR just to the quality setting rather than using the... Uh, the, render, the dynamic render scaling, okay, now we're actually getting a performance boost. So now we're hitting around 45 FPS. So this would be a 1440p internal rendering resolution and then upscaled uh, with FSR3 upscaling to a 4K output. And then we could go with a more aggressive upscale. And let's say, let's say we went actually all the way down to performance. So that would be a 1080p internal rendering resolution but then using the FSR upscaling to try to hit uh, a 4K-like reconstruction. And it looks like we're gonna fall short of 60 FPS here at the ultra setting. So it looks like we will have to turn things down a little bit if we're trying to play on like a 4K 60 Hertz TV that doesn't offer, uh, you know, uh, uh, variable refresh rate. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, so that's a, a little unfortunate. It would have been nice if we could have at least locked that into 60 there, but not the end of the world. If we did want to lock that into 60, we could go down to a more aggressive upscale, or again, we could uh, turn down some graphic settings just a little bit. What if we w went down to the um, uh, high settings rather than the ultra settings? Does that now get us... Oh, interesting. So it looks like the, uh, the rendering resolution is maybe also tied in with the um, uh, with the overall graphics preset because it seems to have brought that back to a native AA. So what if we now bring that back down to a performance upscaling off of the high setting preset? Um, I get kind of annoyed when the graphics presets also hit render resolution, but whatever. Okay, looks like we have now locked to 4K60, at least a 4K60 output, but again, we're rendering internally a lot lower than that we're at the high settings instead of ultra settings. So that's interesting. And then we could also go ahead and play around on the, um, uh, play around at what if we were on maybe 1440p resolution. So if I'm on 1440p resolution, we can go ahead and kick that in. And then we could also uh, go ahead and uh, let's try going back up to the ultra settings. So we're going to be back up to the native resolution, ultra settings at 1440p. And again, let's uh, allow it to at least attempt 120 FPS uh, without capping, but I don't think we'll really get there. Let's go ahead and see where we get. All right, it looks like uh, we're a close to 60 FPS ultra at 1440p on the GTX 1060. So it looks like if you did want to lock to 60 or hit higher than 60, you would turn down the settings or use some uh, rendering resolution scaling. Uh, my thought would be maybe we just pop down to the uh, high settings and see where that gets us. So high settings at 1440p uh, with the FSR anti-aliasing at native resolution. Uh, yeah, we're well over 60 FPS now. And there we go. All right, so that is what we get from the GTX 1060. I'm curious uh, if I don't abandon my contact, uh, what if we went ahead and tried out something a bit more modern, like an RTX 3060, and uh, see if that allows us to you know, max things out at 4K, that kind of situation. I've now popped in the RTX 3060. This is fairly close to the recommended system requirements. Again, if we take a look at this, 
in RTX 2070 and in uh, RTX 3060 are similar performance. 3060 has more VRAM, but we're not going past the eight gigabyte VRAM uh, buffer you'd have anyway. Uh, anyway, so this is, uh, and I, I don't have a 2070, so that's why I'm not using a 2070. So we're basically on the recommended specs, and now I'm rendering the game at 4K60 is the target, and I'm using DLAA, so native 4K60 at the ultra settings, and at least in this intro cinematic, we seem to be easily locking to 60 FPS uh, with the GPU not even approaching 100% usage. Let's pop out into some actual gameplay. And it's looking like, uh, uh, you know, it, it should end up being good. Let, let's go ahead and find out for real, though. Whoa, wait a second. Uh, actually, it looks pretty brutal. No, nope, never mind, we're good. Okay, so it looks like there was an initial, like, everything loading in there <laughs> that was absolutely brutal. Um, and then everything seems good now. <laughs> okay, so we're trying to lock into 60 FPS. It's looking like we are close to that uh, on the averages, but not quite there because of that initial frame rate dip. So if I go ahead and reset the averages, um, we, I think, are now in actual gameplay going to be locking to around 60 FPS here. Uh, GPU utilization hitting, uh, you know, 80-something percent range, so there is some headroom available. But if I want a consistent experience, we could just lock to 60 at 4K and uh, away we go. Again, this is the maximum settings. So this is to me indicating that the uh, recommended GPU was for 4K 60 at maximum settings. Um, and there you have it. Now also there is frame generation available. If you had a 40 series graphics card, I'm still on a 30 series graphics card here, so that's not available. Uh, and of course, we could use DLSS quality and, and things like that if you wanted to boost performance beyond that. But what if we were actually playing maybe at 1440p on an RTX 3060 uh, and trying to target, you know, 120 frames per second uh, instead of trying to do 4K and target 60? Uh, let's go ahead and see how that plays out again at the ultra settings. And this is native resolution using DLAA anti-aliasing. So if I go ahead and reset the frame rate counters, it does look like we are indeed uh, pretty close. Apparently I went too far from my uh, mission area. <laughs> so we're gonna have to uh, reset that. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we are indeed pretty close uh, to 120 FPS cap here. It does dip a little bit below it, but um, yeah. So it's looking like 1440p maxed out on an RTX 3060. And again, DLAA providing much better anti-aliasing than the game would have originally shipped with, running at higher resolutions, higher graphics settings, and all of that. So I think that pretty much clears up all we need to know about the system requirements. A uh, 3060 can play the game at 1440p, 120-ish maxed out, and 4K60-ish maxed out. And uh, a GTX 1060, uh, was well over 60 FPS maxed out at 1080p and could get playable at higher resolutions uh, with other settings going on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and the information. I'm gonna go see how it runs on my Steam Deck. Should I, should I add that into the video? This isn't a Steam Deck focused channel, so I'm not really set up to do Steam Deck coverage. However, I am gonna be playing the game that way, so might as well show you. We are locked to 60 FPS in this opening town area, but not at ultra settings. We are at native resolution though, uh, so can I get where I, uh, so in other words, when I'm playing around in this opening town area, I'm at medium settings at uh, the native uh, resolution for the Steam Deck. And like I said, uh, locking around that 60 FPS mark. If we end up uh, in heavier duty areas of the game, it's certainly potential that I might have to drop the frame rate a little bit. We'll see, because there were some areas that were dipping right to around 60 FPS and mac maxing out the GPU. So this is kind of borderline. Uh, but like I said, that's kind of how the Steam Deck goes, kind of play around with those frame rate caps and everything as you go. But it certainly looks like 60 FPS at medium settings, native resolution, looks and plays pretty good. And I'm going to be playing a whole heck of a lot of this over the next couple of months, most likely. Hope all of you have an excellent day.